Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now this is kind of a coupled in with a How I Print Things because Grond here actually came off of my Ender 3. He is a 3D printed miniature which I've put together at home. Uh, he was a Hero Forge creation. So all of the bits and pieces that have come together to make him were all selected from a bunch of drop down menus and some pictures and you just click what you like. You then purchase the STL file and if you happen to have a 3D printer at home, you can print them yourself. So I did. And I'm actually fairly happy with how we came out. There are a few little imperfections where if I were more patient, I'll be honest, I probably could have buffed those out <laughs> before we got started. But I am nothing if not impatient. So those little imperfections linger. Something that you might want to fix up if you have a shot at this at home yourself. Now Grund here was actually really interesting to paint. Um, this is sort of general advice for anything you might be doing if you are doing D&D styled miniatures. He is a cleric of Ilmata, so you know this might work for just about anything. So without any further mucking around, let's get started. I'll put the uh, paints in the description, you can follow along at home. Now to start off with, I've given Grond, he was a lurid green. You might see some of it lurking under there. <laughs> I hit him with a little auto primer over the 3D print, and then I've given him a spray of Army Painter's Uniform Grey. Ordinarily, I would probably use uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey for a little bit more depth. I wanted a darker grey. If I weren't lazy, I could just paint the grey over the top of them, but we're going to skip that part. It's not going to give us a massively different result. Just letting you know that you could use any old grey you wanted for this. What I'm going to do first of all is I've got here some long beard grey, and I just want to I want to add a little bit of depth to the grey. I want to put some shading, sorry, not some shading, a bit of highlighting on here and kind of rough it up a bit. So I've got any old size dry brush will do. And just very lightly, kind of over the whole miniature really, I'm just going to dry brush against the grain of any detail and get a little bit of grey. And the idea here will be that it's just going to introduce a little bit more texture. Uh, these 3D prints, depending on how you prep them for painting, can end up looking quite smooth. And I don't really want it to look, you know, as if he is, the miniature himself is made of plastic. I want it to look a little more natural. And yeah, that ought to help me with that. So now we've got a little bit of texture on him. I've got here some deck tan. Now this is a Vallejo color. I tend not to like using straight sort of white on fantasy figures. I think it looks a little unnatural. Uh, I know we are painting for kind of a stylized appearance, but just straight white looks a little too crisp and clean for me. So I'm using deck tan here. Now you could, if you want to stick to Citadel colors, you could turn around and use, oh, what might be good here? Maybe Ulthuan gray uh, or Carrick stone if you wanted a more brown sort of finish. But all I'm going to do is pick out some of the underside of his robes and we'll do up these big these big bits here too as well. Um, I want to be careful that I don't hit anywhere that I have already painted. So that gray, I want to be fairly careful with. But if we do hit any of it, it's not the end of the world. We can just tap in a little gray over the top. So let's come back, have a look when I have finished the stage. So I've given that two coats and you'll see it's come out pretty well. It's a just off white Got kind of a grayish tinge to it, but we'll do a little bit more to it later. And I have also hit the uh, the magic fire thingy. You know, I'm not entirely sure what this is supposed to be, but we'll make it up. <laughs> he's a cleric, he's healing. I'm sure it's, it's going to look fine. Uh, now it's worth pointing out because of course these miniatures, this one from Hero Forge here, they don't have any copyrighted material on them. So because Grond is a cleric of Elmata, Ilmata's symbol is a pair of crossed hands that have red thread around the wrists. They are bound. So we're going to call back to that. We can add a little bit of color to the miniature, which will sort of hint at that, but without us having to go to the trouble of painting <laughs> two tiny bound hands on them. I've got a little bit of corn red and just a wee bit of water in there to make sure that it flows off my medium layer brush. And we'll just do the cuffs on his big gauntlets here in red. You'll probably find you only need to do one coat in some of these areas. Now you'll notice when I'm painting him, I'm starting at the bottom closer to where his gauntlets are because 
in a minute, I'm going to paint his gauntlets a different color. So if I make a mistake here and my brush slips, it doesn't matter. I'm going to paint over that area again. I want to always try and be painting away from anywhere that I've already got the color I want it to be. So we'll do those gauntlets and I think it'll look cool. Let's do the rope around his waist in the same color too. Now this was going to take a little bit more, a little more time, a little more care. But as you see, just keep your paint flowing and you shouldn't have any troubles with this. Now just that little bit of red helps us add a bit of color, but without overpowering the fairly simple color scheme that these Ilmata clerics have. Now what I'm going to do is get a little bit of Warboss Green, sorry, Warg Flesh. Warboss Green comes later, spoiler warning. <laughs> add a little bit of water as usual, and we'll just paint in his skin. We're not going to worry too much if we hit his hair in the process. Now be careful because here we will have already painted a couple of areas on this miniature. So I want to move him around a little so I can get access to his neck and what have you. And we might find this goes on in just one coat. My other half, she likes the more sort of Warcraft 40k style green orcs. I like the more Elder Scrolls look, but since this is for her, we'll do it the way she likes. <laughs> and this will just take a couple of coats to thin out. That might be a little bit wet. Oops. Now, while that's drying, we're going to hit three other areas with a couple of shades of brown. We're going to skip through these fairly quickly because they're not particularly complex. So I'm going to do all of his leather areas, so his boots and his gloves. This is dryad bark, and there's a couple of coats of that will see us through. We'll do in the cloth on his pack in Mournfang Brown. And then finally, any last bits of cloth, we'll just use Steel Legion Drab. This is also really good if you've got any uh, spell pouches or coin pouches anywhere on the miniature. You can just touch it in with this stuff now. Now with those colors done, I'm going to do his hair with a little bit of ashen gray. You could use a straight black if you wanted. I mean, you can paint the hair whichever color you like. But because I'm going to shade this in a couple of minutes with quite a dark shade, if I use a uh, dark green, sorry, a dark gray now rather than a straight black, we'll get just a little bit of shading on there as well. So maybe one or two coats of this and he'll be ready. Now, because Grond is wearing half plate, there's quite a few places we can add a little bit of metal, get some more contrast on the miniature. So I'm going to go, of course, there's these big shoulder plates. We don't have to think too hard about that, luckily. <laughs> but also there's this section on the front of his chest, which I'm going to choose to paint as sort of a chest piece with this cape stuff attached to it. So I'll just go as close as I can under there. Uh, at the same time, fill in his mace. The handle of that. I still need to figure out what to do with this bit here. Hmm. It does look like it's forged, so I'll just do that in metal too. So the last thing to come up is really that, well, his mace is a bit boring. So I've got here a little retributor armor, and what I'm going to do is just paint in the head and the handle with this gold color. When we've shaded it a couple of times, it's going to look much more brassy and dark than this. But this is just a little bit more interesting than a single solid lump of iron, <laughs> I think. So with all of those base coats done, we're ready to give him a shade. Now just before I do that, I want to point out, this would be where I would do any little cleanup. So while you're painting, if you make a mistake with one color, just keep painting. Don't stop to fix it. Once you get to the end of it, grab all of your little paints that you've used and just touch up any areas where you've made a mess. If you leave that for the last step, you'll actually find it's much quicker than stop, start, stop, start, fixing any issues that might crop up as you go. Just stick with it, paint the whole thing, and then fix them at the end before this stage. Now we're going to be quite generous with the old Agrax Earthshade this time, so I've given it a good shake. I've got my shade brush. Any large brush will do, to be perfectly honest. And let's just start bucketing it all over Grond. You'll see immediately what a big difference this is going to make <laughs> to the model. So, like I said, be generous. Don't let it pull anywhere too significantly. And you want to make sure that this is going to flow into all of your recesses. Give that nice depth of shading. Ah, oh, it's great. I love my Agrax Earthshade. It fixes everything. So I'm going to go around the whole model, make sure that I haven't missed anywhere. And then we'll leave this to dry for probably half an hour or so. We'll come back and look at what that looks like when he's done. 
Now once it's had plenty of time to dry, you'll see it makes a big difference to all of the shading. If there is any point at which this is going to stand out as being a 3D printed miniature, this is going to be it because, you know, that shade is going to end up really sort of highlighting some of the remaining uh, imperfections in the layer lines, but honestly, eh, it doesn't look too bad to me. And really, for the fact I've got, you know, a character that I got to make, I'm not too worried. What I am going to do, though, is grab out my deck tan again, or whatever you were using for the white, and I'm just going to paint in some of the areas that I want to be a little tidier. So, anywhere where it looks like, you know, the brown went a little over the top, just fill it in with a little bit more white now, and get, you see, a little bit more depth. We're going to go for quite stylistic in our highlights this time. Now, if there is a time-consuming part, it's going to be that bit. Um, to be perfectly honest, it takes a little bit of practice, sort of knowing what shape you want to go for and where to place your white, more or less. I've got here a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh. This is another Citadel color, and I've just thinned this out. And all I'm going to do is just some extreme highlights around some of this white, just to really accentuate some of the shape of the cloak. Same too with these bits up here, but I'm not going to do this on the uh, the flamey bit. I've got something else in mind for that. Now we're going to do the same thing again, just in one stage this time. Just a few little highlights on the grey with some administratum grey. This will look quite sharp going on. Uh, it is a fairly bright contrast, but once it dries a little, you'll notice it doesn't look quite as crazy. Uh, if you want to do the same as with the white and you want to put that mid-tone back on, Dawnstone will work quite well for that and then you can pop your administratum grey over the top. Now if you find yourself wondering where to highlight the grey, you can actually use the uh, dry brush that we first put down as a bit of a guide. If you just highlight wherever the dry brush settled, you'll tend to find it does the job. Now I've got my war boss green, you know, the one I mentioned earlier in the wrong order. <laughs> and what we're going to do is paint in most of Gron's skin and just leave some of the recesses nice and dark. So I've made a pig's ear of that already. Whoops. <laughs> this is a little bit easier when you haven't got the camera in front of you guys. So let's go around and just dab in a little bit more of this on his face. Then finally on the face, if you want to go a little further, I've got some Skarsnick green, and I'm just going to do the very high point of his cheekbones, wee dot on the tip of his nose there, and his brow. Oh dear. <laughs> Luckily I can fix that up with a little bit of the original color again. So we'll go back to a little bit of Warg flesh, and we'll just touch in the area where we overdid it with this Garsnet Green. Now you can of course paint this spell effect however you like, but I want to show you a really cool way using just a couple of extra paints. I've got here, this is Hex Wraith Flame, and you might notice when you've got it on your brush, it's slightly more kind of glutinous and gloopy, and I love it. What I'm going to do is start from about two thirds of the way up, and you see it goes on very similarly to a shade. So I'm just going to paint most of this spell effect with a quick layer of Hex Wraith Flame. Then we'll let that dry for about 20 minutes. And then once that's dried, a little bit of Lamenta's Yellow, which is a glaze paint. Now I'm going to hold them upside down to apply this because it'll make it slightly easier to get the right sort of effect I want, which is just to catch a little bit of the green to enrich in that and make the top bit look yellow. And then what I'll do, you know what, I'm feeling fancy. Let's go a little step further. Now I've got a little Gilliam and Blue, which is another glaze. And honestly, at this point, I'm really just mucking around. I'm having fun. <laughs> what we'll do is just paint in some of it around the base of the, uh, the fiery sort of effect. We can make it look like it's a darker, deeper green, maybe a bit hotter down where it's coming off of his hand. Flows up through the green and then gives us this cool yellow effect at the top. Yeah. 
It's looking pretty cool. I quite like the look of that, to be perfectly honest. But like I mentioned, you could probably just hit that with some uh, hex ray flame. That would do the job. I've got here a little bit of Wazdaka red, and I'm just gonna blip, 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 blip up the up the cord just to highlight some of those areas. And at the same time, we'll just do the edges of the cuffs on his sleeves. Now from here on in, it's really up to you what you might like to do. I've got here a little Sylvaneth Bark, which is a dry paint, and one of my little dry brushes. And I'm just gonna honestly quite quickly flick along the backpack here, and not too fussed if I catch the bedroll as well. I just want a little bit of depth, and a quick dry brush will take care of that. Nice and easy. And then finally, just a little bit of a lighter metallic color. I've got here Ironbreaker. Uh, you might want to go up to Runefang Steel or something, but just a little along the edges of all of the metal gear to catch those high points and introduce a bit more shine in some places. You can also use a bit of silver to highlight the very edges of your brassy gold color that we got going there. That can work quite well. And then with just a couple of tufts and a bit of quick dry brushing on his base, Grond is finished and I'm actually fairly pleased with how we came out. I might do something different with the flame next time, maybe a little bit of uh, red or orange around the base instead of the blue, but I didn't want to add too many colors to the color scheme. I want it to be quite, quite tight. And I think with the uh, gray and white of Ilmata, that's a pretty cool opportunity to do that. I really had some fun with this. It came out better than I was expecting. You can still see a few of the little imperfections here and there, but again, that's really, you know, I am printing on a very basic machine, so I'm actually fairly impressed with how we turned out in the end. So any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the old box below, um, especially if you want to see more D&D style stuff, you know, I'd like to hear about it, and uh, I can give it a shot now, you know, how cool is that? <laughs> so as ever guys, thank you very much for your time, and you enjoy the rest of your day.